welcome to our quick drop-in mental health hack. And I'm so excited because I have the gorgeous Sarah Randonetti. Yes! Mm, thank so you welcome, for having welcome. me, lovely. Thank, thank you. you. And I think I, I have told you before, but I came across Sarah's work. She does the most incredible work in a space called Access Consciousness. And I got such a like fangirl crush on her. And then I met her, well, I met you in person last year. I was like, oh my God, it's Sarah. And I don't, I don't like fangirl over humans. So you must know. <laughs> so thank well, you. I was fangirling over you too. So it was mutual. Ah. It was one of those mutual moments. Absolutely. <laughs> Divine. Sarah, I'm so excited to have you here because I have personally experienced the transformation and the invitation that you've been in my life when it comes to relationships, the good, the bad, the possibilities around that. And um, so just for context for anyone watching, and you know that I've gone through a lot of a time, um, a year and a half ago, going through a divorce. And Sarah, you really, in the most incredible way, gave me such clarity to see what I was experiencing, what I was accepting, um, and gave me, like I said earlier, the invitation to choose something else. So you do all things relationships, so we're definitely going to have to have you back on to dive into some of the other areas. But where would you like to take this today? Let me, well, let me start with a question. When it comes to our mental well-being and relationships, what is your take on that? What have you found? Oh, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> I think I'll probably point to like your greatest tool in really, well, there's five of them, um, greatest tools. <laughs> there's five greatest ones. Um, uh, but, and I hate to sound so cliche because I think until this started to actually, I'll say it's like kind of settle into my world and I started to have my own awareness with it. Um, I probably, I was like, I, I would write this, what I'm about to say off. And that is like, it starts with you. Um, because relationships and like, in like how we're brought up with relationships is they're actually designed to complete you. Like, it's literally like a famous phrase from a movie. You complete me. Right. And so we're just in that, just from that point of view, you, you take the idea that there is something you're missing and that someone else will fill. So you, you walk around not whole until you find that person. Yeah. Um, and that has been fed to us in so many ways, movies, romance novels, um, even like Disney, you know, cartoons that we watched as little, as little kids. Um, so we have this like inherent programming that we approach relationship with. Now I spoke of the five greatest tools that are actually one tool, but it's called the five elements of intimacy. And that's honor, trust, gratitude, allowance, and vulnerability. Now, most of us are trying to have that with someone else. And that if we have that, then we have a great relationship. But what happens is if you only have it because they're there, or you've only created it or been with those elements because you have someone else, then when they leave you, or if, you know, if they leave, the relationship isn't working out or something's not going in a certain way, you will give that person the power often to fix it. Like I need them to get something. I need them to receive something. I need them to be something so that this can fix for me. Well, that is so different when we have our own mental health, if you will, like about how we be with we, with us, with we. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, but when I tell you that this is like the thing that I avoided, like the plague, I am not lying. <laughs> Because it was like, it's that, it's that, it's the relationship. It's the distance between two things, by the way, if you look up relationship. So the way we're literally taught is to maintain distance from somebody, but then always hmm. seeking closeness. So in that is like a, a head trip, right? Like how do you maintain enough distance so that you each have your, have your own sense of self, but then stay together? Yeah. Um, in the work that I do with access consciousness, we actually talk about creation ship where you're creating yourself yeah. and the relationship every day. And it's, it's, it's like a simple mindset tweak, but it changes that relational 
thing um, into something that can always change and shift and show you something different. But it really starts with you. That was a very long-winded response to your question. And I hope that <laughs> that's beautiful. You give the most beautiful long-winded discussion or explanations that really hit home. Me. And that's um, you know what, and and exactly as you said, not to be cliched, but we know this, but we kind of forget about it as we show up every day. And exactly what you pointed out there, because we don't go into relationships as a creationship where we have the opportunity to create it every day. And it just goes into the assumption that because I'm with this person, this is who they've told me they are, and therefore this is how they must be, and this is how I am. And that just starts creating more and more separation, right? Yeah, well, well we're taught to also, like, it's so wild when you dig into this. Um, we're also taught to, like, go find ourselves as if we weren't ourselves <laughs> like growing up, you know, like go find out. But, and, and I get that, but it's almost like your interpretation of it. Um, yeah. you, you want, what we seek often is the definition of ourselves. Once you define something, it can't be anything else. So like, I have a, I have a drink here. This is a tin can and I know that this is a tin can. So I am going to conclude and define it as a tin can or aluminum. I don't know, whatever. And, <laughs> And it now it cannot be anything else sitting here on my desk because I've decided that's what it is. And so we're taught to create ourselves from definition and then go find someone who matches the definition of our definition. And then when we come together, we're two people with definitions of who we are, which then limits what can change and grow. Um, a lot of relationships are based on the idea of I am here. I am this. You are that. We are agreeing to get together and not change. Oh, wow. I know that's <laughs> right. Um, but it is, it's like, if someone starts to starts a new hobby, it's like, what are they doing? Why are they doing it without me? You know, if someone ha changes their point of view, like even politically, like you're, I don't, well, you're not in the United States. Um, during the elections, uh, a couple years ago when Trump first ran, I have saw so many message boards of like marriages breaking up because one person was really behind Trump and one was like, absolutely not. And they couldn't believe they were married to somebody who had these points of view. It was wild um, because someone changed something about, mm -hmm. and they're not being the person they promised to be at the altar. And so, and then that person's wrong. That's the other thing. Like if you change too much, like you're often deemed like judged as wrong. So then people like keep their wings in just enough in order relationship the valuable product and make it work even if it's not working for you to be all of you it's wow. wild wow. And, and you're right we probably could do like a whole series on this <laughs> an entire series for days we can just chat chat chat, chat. <laughs> okay so um what is the i mean you've shared five of the tools the most important tools is there something that if someone right now is in a relationship, whatever that relationship is, romantic or familial or professional, whatever it is with kids, I mean, you do incredible work with relationships with your kids as well. What is something that someone can look at doing or changing or not doing to help them have a little bit more ease in the relationship? Mm. So a lot of us, if you're not having ease, you're probably in an amount of fight. And, and this is where polarity, right, wrong, good, will interrupt what's possible. Because when you have the target ever of being right. You won't let anything into your world that, that will like deter that or change that. Like yeah. you need to prove something. And while you're, while you're knowing you're right, you're also simultaneously knowing they're wrong. And so just walk around that situation. How do you enjoy having someone telling you how wrong they are? Now that, how wrong you are, that might actually be what's going on. They're right. <laughs> and they're telling you that you're wrong, but someone needs to put, drop the um, tug of war, you know, the, the rope, someone yeah. needs to get vulnerable enough to be like, okay, you know what, what's actually going on here? Question is your greatest tool. And if you do so not seeking an answer, you actually will start to download like, wow, this has nothing to do with my relationship or wow, this kind of turn into my mom or, you know, my dad when I'm engaging with someone. Okay. I didn't have to do that anymore. 
Um, but the vulnerability to lower your the vulnerability, one of the tools, um, to lower your walls and barriers and just going, okay, where am I actually creating this? And I don't even know it. Like, where am I creating the fight here that actually mm. isn't creating what I'd like to have? I tell people all the time, ask people all the time in classes, what is the outcome you'd like to create? Like, what is that for sure? And some of them are like, I would just like us to be in harmony and creating, okay, what's the fastest way to get there? Yeah. We often will know, hey, if I just take my hands off this and be like, you know what, I, I don't need to fight this anymore, you could get there faster. But we're so, again, entrained to, because of that, dude, there's so much coming in right now. I'm so sorry, Petra. But, I'll, la, la, la. Um, go, go, go. but because of that program that I talked about in the beginning of like, you aren't whole unless you have someone else. So, so when someone comes into your life, you're like, oh my gosh, like so many people don't even like start their life from their point of view until they get married. Um, so you found somebody, they complete you. You are now a whole person. My right? other half, my better half. <laughs> your better half the okay so <laughs> okay and and it's not to make marriage wrong i just or relationship wrong it's just to kind of again peel the layers off so you can have the awareness so once that occurs you simultaneously often will have such a desire for it to work that you will give you will give up you yeah while also knowing that you don't want to give you all the way up so you fight within the confines of that mm. right it there was is two people who are waking up and choosing each other every day and inviting um, whatever the other person's new points of view are or however they have changed and shifted and you're actually exploring you. Then you're like creating together and you're discovering each other every day. So to back to your question, if you lower your walls and barriers and go, okay, what am I choosing? Because you can't change them. You can only change you. What am I choosing that's creating this? Is there anything here that I can look at and get vulnerable with and and be willing to explore about how i communicate and with the discovery in that exploration um it can be just for you but it's also that place where you start to expand into being more of you and less of needing someone to complete you so if you take every opportunity that you have in every relationship to go okay where am i creating this you get greater now, whether the relationship can receive that, you get to discover that too, but you get greater with every, like one of the greatest gifts of all the relationships I have is that they show me something every day about me. And then I get to look at that and go, wow, that, that is so something I didn't know about me or wow, I'm really on track with that. Like that myself or, mm -hmm. Ooh, Ooh, this person's bringing up some spiky, spiky parts. Like I get to ask a question about that and get more free of it because me being me is space and ease. And yeah. if I'm not being that, then I'm not being me. I love that. Thank you. You mentioned um, the more we do that, the more we become greater. If you can just define what that means. What does being, being greater means? Well, imagine if every, every like heated argument, uh, every unresolved issue, like look over the span of your life if time you you had the tool to like look at it get vulnerable discover something about you i mean all your whole life like let's go all the way back to like you were three and you had a you had a fight over a toy with a friend right if in that moment there was a like download system of like hey you you are valuable and you don't actually have to fight for anything everything can be yours the world is abundant right and you're like check and you put that on your awareness board, if you will. <laughs> and then through life, every, every hurt feeling, every interaction that didn't go the way you wanted, every argument, um, whatever that is, like every time you had any sort of conflict in your life, you went introspective and were able to look at how you helped create it, what points of view you were fighting for that actually didn't belong to you. Um, you know, all of that stuff, all the places where you can, you were wrong that you weren't. Um, all of the places where uh, you gave yourself up for, for the outcome rather than having your own back. Like if you got present in all those moments and you always had a takeaway, even if it, the outcome wasn't what you desired, you're getting greater. And what, oh. how awesome is that? Like what a gift that is. And so like my point of view, I mean, even this morning, there was a conflict this morning in a business that I'm part of. Um, and I was like, 
okay, what is the choice that I can make right now with the time that I have that adds clarity for everybody and will give me information about where I'm creating any confusion and shift it. And I had such a download of like points of view I didn't know I had and things moved way faster and everybody's giggling now and happy. And, and it was just like, push the pause button, what's here to receive. And then I get greater and I get to show up to this conversation with you greater than I was 25 minutes ago. <laughs> Sarah, just the way that you put that, because just that ease in that space that I'm experiencing, you just talking through that. I mean, if we can actually have that in all of our relationships, if we're willing to let go of that wrongness. So I'm going to be repeating this episode and listening to it on a loop. And I hope everyone watching this does as well. And I know that you have to get going. Um, so just last question is if you are, when it comes to, um, I'm trying to think how you, how you said it, how you phrased it. So if you are in a relationship and you don't want to be losing you, tell me about compromise. Cause you know, compromise, mm -hmm. we always think in a relationship, I've got to compromise on this and this and this so that the relationship works. Is that even something or what is, what is your thought on that? I think that there are many times in relationship that you will land in a compromise um, where it's mutually beneficial, for sure. I think that is often something that we c you can target. And then there's choice. So how do I put this uh, with the time that we have? So what I've made as a demand for myself that has made my relationships greater is to include me in all my choices. So. Um, if I would like to have Mexican food tonight and I'm like out with my team and everybody's like, I want to have spaghetti, but I'm like, I'm paying, you know, I'm paying, I should get what I want, you know? Um, then, then I go, does it actually create for me? So I'm talking about work, like a work environment. This is with anything, right? With my kids, my husband, um, friendships, does it actually create greater for me to not have Mexican food tonight and have spaghetti? and receive all the joy of all these bodies that I adore so much having the food that really is exciting for them. Will that actually excite me? Now it's not about getting my way or not getting my way. It's going, Hey, does this include, does, if I give up Mexican food <laughs> in this analogy, um, <laughs> does it, does it, it, does it actually create greater for me to do so? Um, yeah. and so if I include me in that choice, it's not about or did we get to a compromise that matched everybody getting 50% of what they want, bleh, all that computation. It's like, there's been like so many times where it's not even about compromise. If we land there, like I said, awesome. That's yeah. fucking cool that we both landed. We landed in the middle and everybody got half of what, whatever the compromise is to you. Um, but a greater tool is just to ask to include me in my choices and, and giving ourselves up might that might be our next conversation because it's sometimes not what we think it is so giving up mexican food might look like oh i got steamrolled and i just had to go along with the crowd but if i ask this question wow will i actually receive more and will it create more and greater for me in my life and my team and my business if we all go out and have spaghetti because i still like spaghetti i don't have to be right about mexican food right <laughs> um and i go wow the future of that choice is way greater than whether I eat a taco tonight, you know? Yeah. So I, I, you know, e even with my kids, you know, they'll, they'll ask for something and, you know, I've had have relatives and people around being like, you're going to let them do that. And I was like, listen, it creates for me to have them be able to do that. You know, like that works for me. Yeah. Um, if I'm not trying to play by like the parenting standard and rules and how a parent and child are supposed to interact and actually being me in the relationship. Amazing. Oh, Sarah. Okay. We are inviting you back for so many more conversations, but thank you so much. And where can we find you and find out all your upcoming classes and what you're busy with? Yeah. Um, you can go to sarahgrandinetti.com, which I'm sure will be in some show notes on how to spell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and at Sarah Grandinetti on Instagram, it's, it's the platform I'm the most active. Amazing. Um, yeah. And, and, <laughs> You know, what else is possible in relationship? I'll just leave that. Like what else is possible with this thing we call relationship if we were willing to be us in every interaction? Like, what does it look like to like 
go to question rather than conclusion or right and wrong or you know play in the get out of the polarity playground and get in the possibility playground and you start to yes. you know be willing to receive information about you about your partner you know and and stop functioning from how it should be or how it has to be and ask what can it be amazing i adore you Thank you so much I adore you too babe we'll see you soon